Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target a morning brief for Investify to Pop Precision on a daily basis. Thanks you so much for checking us out this morning. We are going to talk about Robinhood stock, which has not, you know, it's only about a week old, right, from the uh, IPO it had last week. Uh, 9% off the first day, kind of flatlined the second day. And then this week, it's been crazy. Uh, it was up like 24% yesterday. It's up another, uh, it's in the teens this morning. So the stock's definitely in play. Uh, Kathy Wood has come out behind it. Even Kramer said it was a buy, I think, Monday night on his show, which was kind of surprising that he came out in favor of it. Uh, again, we're going to kind of peel back about, you know, where has where the stock been? Where is the stock going? What are, what are the benefits and what are the, uh, the potential downsides of actually owning the stock and put it in your portfolio? Uh, if you believe that you believe, obviously, then you uh, then you hold some shares. If you don't, I think it's you know it's going to be tough to buy in after it moved uh, forty percent up in in a couple of days. I think there's a better uh, uh, opportunity in the future, but we're going to pull the chart and I will tell you specifically what I'm looking at there. And then when if it's not my thing, I still prefer a bigger custodian like a Schwab. Um, but if uh, if you're looking to get in the stock, we'll we'll I'll let you know kind of what I'm thinking when I see that stock as far as uh, getting in. As far as the question of the day, we're going to take a look, look about what is a gapping stock. There's several different types of gaps out there. Um, again, mostly are used for day trading, like our. A uh, particular strategy that we use, we use a gap and go strategy with very specific parameters around it. Uh, several others teach different uh, things of recording the gaps. But if you have a stock that is gapping, that means it's in play uh, for sure. And that's what you often need as a trader is I just need, you know, we need something to move. So you can set parameters, uh, you know, mathematical model around it. And then, of course, you know, take advantage of the fact that the stock is in play. Uh, for the longs and shorts today, Activision just uh, crushed earnings. <clears throat> they had the ultimate triple play, right? They beat the top line. They beat the bottom line. They uh, guided up as far as their future uh, forecast, moving everything higher. You know, that's a win across the board. Stock market loves that. Investors love that. So it goes higher. Uh, we also have NVTA, which is Invitoff. I'm saying that right. Uh, a company that beat earnings, not quite as, you know, a sexy a story as as Activision this morning, but they do meet our parameters just barely uh, with the um, uh, with the volume rising here going into the open. So we'll take a look at that, and then the last one we'll uh, you know we'll take a look on the short side at GM. Uh, the storyline there is they missed estimates on some earnings, uh, but they did beat revenue and they upped their guidance. But again, the stocks kind of run up a little bit crazy for what I would call a. Uh, run of the mill automaker, uh, if you can get away with saying that, but I mean, you know, nothing super exciting about GM in my opinion. Uh, you know, I guess the Bronco, if you're going to, I mean, I own one, but I mean, I like it, but I don't think it's going to change the world, uh, which is kind of what I'm looking for out of, out of a stock. So we'll see. Uh, stocks kind of run up. So I think it does have room to the short side. And then, of course, we'll keep a look at what's going on in Robinhood. I would have to think that the stock's moving down today after just move, just do making a crazy move higher, but we shall see. All right. That's what we got for our show today. If you're catching us on replay, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, hit the notifications bell. I've been picking up uh, pretty few decent amount of subscribers so thank you i like that and if you want to catch us live it's 25 bucks to come into the room you have a q a window and a chat window that you don't see here on the uh on the on the uh replay but if, with that let's go ahead and get started Welcome back, everyone. Here is our lineup card for today, Wednesday, August 4th. Standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear this morning. Full disclosure information is available at ototnow.com. All right, mission objectives, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. Well, we're talking, like I said in the open, about Robin Hood stock, you know, only five or six trading days old. Uh, moving all over the place, uh, been kind of crazy. And of course, Kathy Wood came out behind it. Uh, she bought, I think uh, the official term was a, a cabillion trillion shares or something uh, ridiculous as far as the amount she loaded up on. So she believes, obviously, you know, she's a respected 
uh, you know, has a respected opinion in the space. So I was pretty surprised about that, but I think that move alone was probably enough of an endorsement to have a lot of folks that wanted to get in on the stock um, or the ones that lost money on the day one, because remember moved down 9% on the first day <clears throat> of the, well, uh, you know, she saw the buy signal, so she's in, but we'll pull the chart and take a look at that uh, here in a bit. All right, question of the day, we'll look at gapping definitions and again, some of the strategies associated with that. Our flow for today, long, short, open, short, long. We'll take a market review, look around the world, look at headline review. You wanna talk about bad numbers that hit the market this morning? Uh, the ADP payroll number, it was about half of what was expected. Expected new jobs in the 600,000s turned out to be in the 300,000. I'm actually pretty shocked the market isn't selling off pretty hard off of that news. Because that's, you know, now with New York shutting down, not shutting down, requiring to show positive proof of vaccines to go into a gym or a restaurant. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, Texas and Florida governors are standing tough, but I think, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this plays out with the uh, Delta variant. But, you know, that with negative jobs, I, I think, sets us up for uh, a move to the downside, if you will. All right. Long term investments. We'll pull up the chart on Hood and take a look. Short term, if you're just joined in the room, it's on name pop in. That is not the uh, let me get this sent out to you for the longs and the shorts of the day. There you go. Just hit the chat up with that. <coughs> All right. Let's go over to TD Ameritrade and take a look at what we have going on here. Here's how I'm set up for this morning. I have the SPY, you can see here's the move down on the left-hand side uh, based off of that jobs number that came out not too long ago, like minutes ago, if you will. Uh, ATA, ATVI, power and higher, it's gonna be probably right up against that 10%, uh, going higher and work swimming against the market, but I still love the story. Again, they hit the triple playoff of earnings. All right, we have NVTA, which is Invita, uh, not as quite a strong gap, but gapping up and uh, the volume is right at our minimum. And then I have Hood pulled up over here, but let's switch that to General Motors. And there's what you can see as far as the gapping down for the stock. And then there's the earnings uh, down there at the bottom. All right, the... Um, as far as where we are in the overall market, still power and higher. Uh, again, yesterday was kind of an interesting day when you zoom in at the, uh, the look of the day. So we started down and then you have it powering higher throughout the day. So a little bit, a uh, little bit crazy there as far as the action. Then you can see the uh, downside here. All right. So you can see congestion, but basically about where we started and uh, we'll go from there. All right, on into uh, the market review. Let's go ahead and take a look at cnbc.com, which is right here, and take a look at these futures. So futures down 0.4% uh, in the Dow, a little bit in the red in the NASDAQ. These were all green not too long ago, like when I woke up and started researching things for the day. Uh, green across the board, right? So this is all that payroll, ADP payroll report miss um, that's dragging the market down. All right, Europe up across the board slightly, nothing super exciting there. Uh, Asia mixed bonds, 1.137, you know, the yields just continue to drop. Remember the uh, inflation craze of the two, what, of the three months ago? Uh, yeah, was it transitory? Yes, uh, was, who was saying that? Uh, I was saying that as well as Chairman Powell, you know, that, that guy's a little has a bigger important position than me. But uh, I do say that uh, the whole, the fears of the um, inflation going higher, I think have largely worn off. Um, and of course the market, you know, moving higher based off of that, you know, cheap money, if you will. Um, but I do think the COLA is higher than uh, we've had in recent history. So again, that adjustment will come out here in September. And then for October, uh, excuse me, uh, it takes effect in uh, January. All right, as far as oil, uh, kind of steadily settling back into our range, uh, settling off, selling off a little bit there. Uh, gold and silver up over percent across the board, and then crypto uh, bouncing a little bit today across the board. All right, as far as the headlines for today, uh, city sees a correction coming. Okay, gasp, right? Correction, ten percent sell off. Uh, yeah, too many in inexperienced investors plowing into stocks. Well, that you know, faulty logic there, right? Because if there are too many experienced 
inex- it doesn't matter what their experience level. If you have investors plowing into the stock, which way stocks, which way guess which way the market's going, yeah, higher, right? So I uh, wouldn't be sweating their uh, their logic here. A correction will happen again. Don't even worry about it, right? You know that's going to happen. A bear market will happen again. That's twenty percent. These are things you're prepared for. All right, Under Armour, uh, nice move yesterday. Nice upgrades today, and probably creeping higher. We can take a look at that at the open. Uh, Caesars, yeah, moving higher off of earnings. Guess who has earnings today? Later today, win. All I do is win, win, win is actually not true. All the thing does is drop. It is a straight move down uh, from things. So uh, it's not been a, uh, it's been a house of pain, if you will, since I'm in it. So that's more of the appropriate song uh, that's out there. They have the jump around song, if you don't recall. Um, all right. Let's see. CVS Health boosts pay and cuts education requirements for their workers. That's just kind of a funny headline. Just going to have to chuckle there and leave that alone. All right. General Motors missing earnings. You talked about that uh, earlier. That's what we have for our short. Not that it's not going to fall like a rock, but I do think it can meet our parameters uh, for today. All right. Robinhood up 13% now after 24% move up yesterday. Again, we'll look at that here in a second. Yeah, cruise line stocks. Good luck with the opening stocks. The only one I have is Win Win Resorts, and it has not worked for me. Um, so uh, I'm not sure with the Delta variant, the reopening stocks are the place to be. All right, let's take a look at. Don't see anything else here of note. All right, here's Robinhood and its short what four trading day uh, history going to be day five today. Nine percent down on the day one. Again, it opened up at 38. They had enough shares to open and stay right at that level. And then, of course, drop down. Then a nothing move on Friday. And then Monday up, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, Monday up a little bit, almost back to IPO price. And it screamed higher yesterday uh, to the tune of 24%, up to $47. And then it's up today as well. Uh, let's just check the price super quick. Got to be about 50, right? Yep, 54 uh, so pretty, uh, you know, off this chart that we're even looking at. So what do I think? Well, performance already. Now you've got a 30 a stock that's moved up 35% since the IPO a week ago. So I don't know. I'm not a buyer here. I, I think it, it, it has to come in. I mean, it's up at 54. Uh, I just don't see it just powering higher right here. I don't think it's this home run that just keeps going up and up and up until it's out of sight. Uh, I do think it has to come back below 50. I would not be surprised if, I don't know if it'll break 40 again, uh, but you could probably hold out for 45. If you're dying to have the stock, I would say 45, something to look at. None of the numbers are good at all. So you just have to like close your eyes and, and have some, take the uh, leap of faith off the cliff on this one if you want it. I think there's better names out there in the space, Schwab or just big, uh, Big finance, I would go with JP Morgan, the best out there as far as your bank that's both an investment bank and a retail bank. All right, let's set up for the open. (coughs) Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time, On Target play of the day. We have three seconds to the opening bell. Okay, less than three seconds. I'll give you that. Here's the S&P 500. It's been selling off down in the red. We've had that ADP number uh, that we talked about. All right, ATA, ATVI, I love it long. It's also setting up nicely for us because it just sold off a couple of bucks here. Uh, this is another aggressive entry. We're going to use a dollar stop. When this thing bottoms, we're going to take it back long. So 82. All right, all right. Simmer down stock. So we're going to go 81.70 is the bottom of the day here. So 82.70 to the upside. See if this holds here at 81.70. We use 82.60 for a 90 cent stop. Actually, we use an 80 80 cent stop, 82.50. So here's our parameters here. If this holds, 81.70 is the low of the day. We're going to use 82.50 to the upside. Again, that's an 80 um, 80 cent stop on an $82 stock. So right around that 1%. 
We're going to go to a 70 cent stop. So 82.40 is now the move to the upside. 82.40, once it hits that, we're taking it higher. It's going to hit it right here. Okay, nice entry at 82.40. Again, going long. Uh, bottom side, well, there, get rid of that little guy. Uh, again, you're covering yourself down here at 81.70 is the bottom at the low of the day. And again, we're taking this long in accordance with the uh, triple play thesis, beat the top line, bottom line, and as the worst arrow ever. Okay, this stock is jumping all over the place here. Or the chart is anyway. All right, so we are in this long and uh, 70, let's see, make sure my math is right. 81.70 to 40 is a 70 cent. So we're going up to 83.10 is our first R. 83.80 would be our second R. And 84, what did I say, 70 cents? Rough math day. So 70 cents here, 8340, 83.10, that's correct. 83.80, that's correct. And now 84.50. So right where it was, uh, just what, seven minutes ago is already our exit point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So love this entry here. Sorry for the big chicken scratch right in the middle of the uh, chart there. Uh, but I really like how that's set up. Again, that doesn't mean it's going to work, but uh, have that lower stop in an 8170 and get out if it hits it. All right, let's look it over at Invita. Uh, nice move up. It's over 10% now. It's got some of the volume. You see the volume issues with it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a lot of a lot of volume here in this minute too, 300,000 shares. Uh, it was just barely knocking on the door of 100,000 shares when the market opened. All right, GM, well, that would have worked short. Um, so it was opened here at 55 and 50 cents, uh, almost a three hour move down in uh, GM already. You certainly can't take it here. Again, you want your move, you want your trade to, to uh, go go against you at first so you can get an entry point like we did here in ATA, ATBI. So NVTA and GM both would work but you'd have to grab them right at the open. All right, let's take a look at some other names <clears throat> out there that are in motion. I'm on a different chart here. Let's look at the short side first. Uh, live person selling off. We'll get rid of GM here, LPSN. Down 12%, looks like an earnings play. Didn't have the volume earlier, but it does now, <clears throat> just barely. All right, look at some, a lot of off. I've oh, got CVS lowering their education requirements. I said I was gonna let that headline go, but it's kind of tough to. Um, okay, I didn't know they had education requirements. That's my point, right? So uh, the, I, I live less than, you know, about a mile from a CVS and we go there all the time. So anyhow, um, all right, CVS uh, looks like they're filling the gap a little bit there and now selling off. Uh, can't really, I wouldn't hop in on that name here uh, going south. All right, we're in our trade. We're up in R. I'm going to look at some other names here, see what's going on in the Chinese tech world. Uh, Baba, we talked about the other day. I said it was one of the best um, stocks out there. And sure enough, look at that. In the last few minutes, it's moved from 195 to 200. So on the day, it's up uh, 350 or so, but I think it's a clear buy here. It's good to see it getting some love and support back above 200. Let's look at K-Web, see if it's traveling with it. It is K-Web up 2.6 on the day. Let's check out Didi. Did say it's a must-own stock. Did say it's a buy below 10. It's at 10.03, okay. Haven't printed money there yet, but uh, certainly I think that's a position to go higher. And another name that's back in play. <clears throat> so I guess in Wu this is what I read this morning. So in Wuhan, you know, that's where this kind of this COVID thing uh, supposedly started. You know, I don't think we know the uh, specifics of what happened and, you know, all of that, blah, blah, blah. But in Wuhan right now, they're already locking things back down. Um, so the reason the Tao, like the Tao Education Group, Chinese Tutoring Service, uh, they're back moving higher. It was A, they sold off like 70% due to the Chinese government crackdown. But also, if they are locking down schools and things, now all of these names that have just sold off uh, for Chinese tutoring uh, are going to come roaring back, right? Because that's what parents do when the kids are uh, going to be stuck at home. 
So kind of an interesting uh, story there. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. And we'll check out Hood real quick. So there's your move. Uh, I guess Robin Hood is going to power higher. It's up 40% on the day. This chart is so incredible, it's almost laughable. So let's just look at the entirety of Robin Hood now. Holy crap. So <clears throat> I'll don't even get it on a five day chart. Let's go to a 10 day. There we go. So it opened at 38, dropped 9% on day one, basically flat day two. Uh, a little bit, and then look at this move. That is a crazy chart. It's sitting up at 65.60. <clears throat> well, certainly if there's any shorts in the name, they are gone, because uh, this stock is now looking at 90% in a week. So if you shorted uh, Robinhood, I would just, uh, I, I would stop that right now. Um, but if you haven't, this is a, almost a clear short hopping in. Uh, you would, that's kind of like shorting Tesla though, which I was never successful at doing. So don't listen to me when I say it's a clear short. Um, but anyhow, uh, unbelievable that it's moved up uh, 40% today. It really is. All right. <clears throat> Our trade's hanging in there. Uh, you know, just kind of flatlining here for what, seven minutes, six minutes. So we'll check back on it. Um, here's what's going on in the world. MSTR, I still haven't done my piece on uh, crypto, but again, it's the, the moral of the story is going to be, I'm going to say MSTR and ETHE are your players if you want to play it uh, through your brokerage account. If you want to go off in your coin wallet, then you can go crazy. <clears throat> well, don't go crazy. I'm going to say up to 10% of your portfolio in crypto, though, which I never thought I would say. All right, AMD up, AMC up. Let's see, ATVI, we already talked about. Nikola bouncing off its lows again from its uh, founder getting indicted on fraud. <clears throat> Get the stock, so it's bouncing up. Got Bob up a couple percent. DraftKings up a percent. Um, so I'm kind of surprised these names are up, especially after that jobs report. All right, DXC has been, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with DXC, I think I talked about yesterday, spinoff of Accenture. Um, they've been just crushing it, so. Uh, good for them. Mind Medicine has been up, so it's selling off a little bit. Uh, Delta Airlines reopening trade wouldn't touch that. Raytheon's been on fire, so it's selling off a little bit. All right, there's DD, less than a percent though. <clears throat> All right, let's check back on our trade real quick, and it's out the bottom. All right, there you go, busted out of that trade. Boo, Red X of shame. Man, I like that trade too. So, all right, that's the way it works. Down an X and a move on and come back at it tomorrow. Don't look over here at this 40% move in Robinhood. <laughs> it's what a 50 cents. That's what a 20, 30 R move in Robinhood long if you'd have taken the trade. So, hmm. all right, that's the way it works. All right, let's back over go back over to Chrome here and Investopedia and talk about gapping definitions. Now, we only talk specifically about a gap and go strategy. There are other strategies out there. Uh, I'm just not a fan of them because I studied this one so much. So I believe, and yes, you know, you can go multiple days in a row losing one R, but uh, you make up for it when you have a couple trades in a row and you're making three R. All right. A gap occurs when the opening price for security is far above or below. You can gap up or down. Um, the previous closing price with no trading activity in between. So think about that for a second. So <clears throat> like an earnings report. So you have a bid ask spread, right? And then you all of a sudden, even though you know have a blowout earnings report and even though there's no trades, so say a stock is at $10 and it jumps up to $12. Well, it's a 20% move, right? Um, you can go from 10 to 20 with no trades in between. And that's what people don't realize. People are like, well, how about everybody that, uh, you know, it moves 10 cents and then there's some exchanges and then 20 cents. It's like, no, it instantly moves from 10% up to 20%, right? So, and without any trades because the bid and the ask jumped at the same time, but they never touched. Obviously a bid and ask touch then, uh, the, then a trade's going to execute. So this is when it, the whole thing moves up. You see that on basically on news. So it can be partial gaps, breakaway, runaway, and exhaustion gaps. <clears throat> I would say continuation gap is what another one I use. Um, generally happen overnight. So that's why these strategies are so popular is because they happen overnight and then the volume hits. You can take them pre-market, but mostly the volume hits when the... Um, <clears throat> 
when uh, when the market opens uh, for everybody. Okay, yep. Robin Hood's at 77 now, so up 65% uh, on the day. Uh, that's insane. That's just insane. Good, good for them. Good for everybody who's in it. Uh, quite a move. All right. The common gaps. There's some charts. So this is just that gap up that we're talking about. <clears throat> a breakaway gap occurs when the price moves above a significant resistance area. Uh, let's see. Do they give a breakaway? Well, here's a runaway gap. Uh, and there's a breakaway gap. Okay, so <clears throat> here you have a channel trade is what they're saying and then it breaks the channel and that's called a breakaway gap. And then a runaway gap is when you're not breaking a channel, it's a continuation, of, but it just continues that trend that a stock is already in. Um, exhaustion gap is kind of uh, near the end of a trend when the trend reverses. Uh, so these member are going with the trend. These are, okay, when it fails and you haven't moved the other way, uh, that's a pretty big deal. And again, those are associated with living, uh, with rising uh, volume. All right, trading strategies, we'll skip that down at the bottom. It's called playing the gap, no matter which one of these that you, you go with. Um, <clears throat> we're a buy the gap. We're taking in the direction that it's going. It's called gap and go, if you will. I'm not going to turn around and um, take it the other way, which would be selling the gap or closing the gap or fading the gap, uh, any of these things that are that are down here. All right, <clears throat> stop limits, there's several strategies in here. It talks about it, about how to use stop limits as well as trailing stops. Uh, if you're a trader, uh, you know we use hard stops and don't move them. You can use a trailing stop if you want, or you can simply stare at the keyboard and use a uh, mark it in and mark it out, which is, honest, <clears throat> which is honestly what I do as long as I'm sitting at the keyboard right? Because it's right there. I have multiple screens so I can see it. And if it gets close to one of the stops, then I'll just mark it in or mark it out. Um, all right. So that's it I have for that. I'm going to look and show you the Rob. Oh, Robin Hood keeps getting stopped out. That's why the, uh, the, trading, uh, the trading is crazy. So let's look at that real quick and then I'll let you go. You don't see it too often. So <clears throat> remember, there's circuit breakers in a stock. So these stocks are moving. Robin Hood is not. So it gets stopped out here at 65. It opened up for a whopping two minutes of trading and now we're stopped out at 77. Now, I think these are incrementally longer stops the more you hit them during the day. But again, this is to stop the machines from just running away rampant. So quite the crazy day in uh, Robinhood. Again, good for investors uh, that are already in it. Uh, not real good if you're looking to get in it. Um, but again, hmm, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it here. So, all right, that's all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you back tomorrow. Bye.